sequence control. Sequence control just means something has to happen before something else can happen. So this is largely a chapter on reading schematics. I don't expect you to memorize all this stuff, but there's good reasons why we might have sequence control. So in this, this is a really simple example, and you'll note that to energize this second motor, you have to first have power here. Well, to have power there, you're going to have to have started M1. And then here's the route for after M2 closes, and now you can close motor 3. You can energize motor 3. So to energize motor 3, you first have to do number 2, and to do number 2, you first have to do number 1. That's a nice, simple, elegant way to separate them. This, in this way, we take an extra auxiliary contact. So here's M1, and now we have two normally open contacts on that contactor, on that big motor starter. This is AND logic, so it's telling you, hey, I've got to press this start button, and I need to have motor 1 running to get motor 2 to start. And this is the same setup down here. Now, we could also use timing relays. That's a little more pretty. And this is probably a little more common. Why would you want to have timing relays? Well, one reason is, is motors have inrush, right? So if these three motors, 1, 2, and 3, if we start them all at the same time, we might have just tremendous amount of inrush current, and the system can't handle it. But if we start them one at a time, we let things settle out. So these have a five-second delay between them. What kind of contact is this? We got the little up arrow, which means on. It's normally open. That's an on delay. It's normally open, timed close, on delay. This is the same type. So you see, when you press this start button, and after the ceiling's picked up here in just an instant, we've also energized TR1. But the TR1 contact waits for five seconds before it closes. It's normally open, time close. Well, when that happens, that's going to fire up M2 and the second timing relay, which gives you another five seconds. So you press the button, the first motor starts, five seconds later the second starts, and the third motor starts almost uh, five seconds later. Now, when we come along and press the stop button, what's going to happen? Well, as soon as you press stop, these instantly turn off M1 and and TR1 turn off, which turns that dude off instantly, which turns these guys off instantly, which turns this one off. So they're all, this is all happening on the stop side really fast. This is a routine for stopping in order. I'm not sure why you might want to do that. Maybe there's a fan set up or maybe there are pumps that are staged. I don't know. But notice this is an off delay relay. It's got the little down for off, normally open. So the way this guy's going to work is as soon as this timing relay is energized, as soon as that happens, this will close. It closes instantly. But it's on the off that you get a delay. So you notice this is a seal in of some sort. And anyway, these are staged to turn off in order. All right. Okay, so lots of different possibilities. We can look at these in more detail. And we're going to do some of these while we're in class or in lab, so you'll see how some of them work. Uh, again, the whole principle of sequence control is to get one thing to happen before the other. And the main thing we need to know is how to read a schematic. And then we can figure out how these guys work.